In this guide, I'm excited to take you on a breathtaking journey to one of the most stunning and picturesque locations we have in Colorado, Mount Evans. If you can get over your fear of heights, or don't mind the squeamish winding roads all the way up, a treasure trove of wildlife opportunity awaits you. So let's go up Mount Evans today. In this video, we'll go over everything that you need to know about Mount Evans, how to have a great and fun day up there. First, we'll go over the reservation system and how to make one of those online. Then we'll go over my lens recommendations. These would be the lenses that I think you should bring to make the best photos while up on Mount Evans. Then we'll go over the wildlife. What kind of wildlife can you expect to see and where can you expect to see it? Then at the very end, we'll go over some precautions to think about before making this trip. And then I'll give my final master plan which would be, in my opinion, the best way to spend your time on Mount Evans, the best time to go in, and how you can make the best day possible. As with most popular Colorado recreation spots, Mount Evans is not any different. You're going to need a reservation to get in. So from the Mount Evans homepage, scroll down here to the at a glance section and right here under reservations, click the link. This will take you to recreation.gov, which will show you the three options you have to pick from for Mount Evans. This top option here is the one I'd recommend. This gets you everything along the road. This gets you to all of the sites, including Mount Goliath, Summit Lake, and the Summit Interpretive Area, which is the very top. There is a middle option here if you don't care about Summit Lake. This gets you just Mount Goliath and then the summit. And then this third option here is Summit Lake Park only, which means you'll get to Summit Lake, but then not get to go to the very top. Pick which one you want, and then select the date on the calendar. And this will show you all of the timed entries that are still available. The number in parentheses below shows you how many are left. I have found that booking a week in advance, you will have your choose between any time entry that you want. But even on the day of, there will still be entries left. You just may not get for your ideal window. In this section, we'll go over my lens recommendations. I give basically three lens recommendations that I think you should bring along in your bag if you have them. Number one might come as actually a bit of a surprise. I'd recommend bringing a super zoom lens. These are lenses that can zoom in for telephoto stuff for wildlife, but also can go wide enough to capture some landscapes. That's a perfect lens to bring to Mount Evans, so that would be my number one recommendation, a super zoom lens. Number two, I would bring a dedicated wide angle lens. The landscapes up there are amazing and there's so many spots to pull off and take really good wide angle shots. So I would definitely bring a wide angle lens. And then lastly, I would bring a dedicated telephoto lens for the big end stuff. A lot of times the mountain goats or the bighorn sheep or the marmots can be at a bit of a distance. And so having that extra reach with a full telephoto lens definitely has its advantages. So those are my three lenses that I would definitely bring in the bag for this trip. So there are uh, bighorn sheep, as you can see. <laughs> Definitely one of the main species to look out for when you're on the road up through Mount Evans. There is a good sized herd right near Summit Lake Park. This is where that video was shot from last year. So always be on the lookout for the bighorn sheep right around that area. The marmot, or more specifically the yellow-bellied marmot, can be seen pretty much across the entire road up to Mount Evans as soon as you get above tree line. These guys live in the tundra and they are kind of chubby. And it's for good reasons, because they need to store enough fat to be able to hibernate for 200 days a year. They will go back into their burrows around late September or early October, and they will not come back out again until May. So that is why they have to store so much fat, but they can be seen all along the road, up on the rocks, pretty much, like I said, as soon as you get above tree line. For certain, the most iconic and most recognizable wildlife species around Mount Evans is, of course, the mountain goats. 
that is not to say that the mountain goat does not have some controversy around it. I think most people think of mountain goats as sort of the epitome of Mount Evans and the Colorado mountains. They've sparked some pretty heated debates around Colorado, especially within the conservation community. Mountain goats are not native to Colorado. They were introduced back in the late 40s as a way to get more hunting licenses sold. So the catch is, their presence really poses a threat to the balance of the local ecosystem. Mountain goats compete with native species for resources like vegetation and minerals. Especially they compete with the bighorn sheep, which are native to Colorado. This competition can really disrupt the habitat and negatively impact other indigenous animals who've evolved to coexist within the environment. So this has really become a big challenge for the wildlife management programs here in Colorado to keep the goat population under control. And Rocky Mountain National Park will go as far as euthanizing goats if they show up in the park because they are not native and they take away resources from bighorn sheep, which are native and live in the park. So it is a very controversial species, but they seem to do very well up at Mount Evans and they are a great thing to go up and photograph. To reach our first hotspot, we're gonna go in through the gates and then we're gonna start the traverse up. It won't take you long to get out of the tree line though. And we are going to make our first stop at the Mount Goliath natural area. This is going to be the spot for our birders to pop out and take a little bit of a hike around this open space. This is a very unique location on the road to Mount Evans because it sits right at the tree line. So you're able to see bird species that live down in the trees in the wooded areas, but you're also able to see some species that live above up in the tundra. Bring your binoculars and keep an eye out for the most common sort of mountain birds that you would see in Colorado, including Canada's jays, mountain chickadees, there's various kinglets that you can see. Red-breasted nuthatches are almost a guarantee. Chipping sparrows will be around. And on the sunnier days, keep an eye out and keep an ear open for those buzzing in broad-tailed hummingbirds, which can also be found here. As far as some of the rarer species you can see here, keep an eye open for dusky grouse and also keep your eye up in the skies. You can sometimes see golden eagles or turkey vultures circling above. Once you've had your birding fill at Mount Goliath Natural Space, it's time to move further up the road, and we are going to go from birding mode into marmot watch out mode. Like I said, anytime you get above the tree line, marmots can be lined all on the side of the road, either on top of rocks getting sun, or sometimes even right on the side of the road, so keep an eye out for them. Also, this is a section where you are going to start driving on some precarious roads with some pretty big drop-offs. My advice is just don't look down and everything's going to be just fine. As we make our way to Summit Lake Park, right before you get to that park, keep an eye out for bighorn sheep. I have seen them here in the meadow right before you get to Summit Lake Park. I've also seen them on the mountainside right to the left of Summit Lake. So keep an eye out there, but you're definitely gonna wanna make a stop at Summit Lake Park. Once you've wrapped up your time at Summit Lake Park, there's only one stop left in this tour, and that is, of course, all the way up to the tippity top, we're going to the summit. And again, you're going to be met with some pretty precarious, tight roads with some pretty far drop-offs. So again, just don't look down. But it's along these bends and twists at the end where we're going to find our primary photography target, the mountain goat. The mountain goat can always be seen along these roads that lead up to the summit. So making it up to the summit is definitely worth it, not just for the great view, but also to get the best photography opportunity of the mountain goats. There are a couple of considerations to take into account before booking a trip up to Mount Evans. The first is the altitude and how easy it is to get altitude sickness. This is the highest paved highway in all of North America. It is the fifth highest in the world and you will end up in the summit at over 14,000 feet. If you are coming in from out of town, you need to take at least a few days to get acclimated to the altitude before attempting this trip. The best way to combat altitude sickness is to drink plenty of water. So make sure you have a lot of it with you when you head up. 
Another consideration to think about is whether or not you or someone who's traveling with you has a fear of heights. As I've mentioned in the video and as I've shown in some of the clips, there are some pretty dramatic drop-offs along this road. It is definitely not for the faint of heart or for people who may have a fear of heights. So it's definitely something to think about. Weather for the day is also another thing that you're going to want to take into consideration. Colorado summers are notorious for late afternoon thunderstorms, and one of the most dangerous places you can be is up on top of a mountain during a storm that has frequent lightning. So if it's at all possible, definitely schedule a day where it looks like it's going to be clear in the afternoon. The last consideration I will mention is about having reliable transportation. You definitely don't need a four-wheel drive as the road up is paved all the way to the top. There are some parking lots that have a little bit bumpy sections where maybe having a little bit higher ground clearance would be helpful. But overall, it's not that you need four-wheel drive or even all-wheel drive. But I will say is you do need something that is reliable. Cars have a very difficult time operating at that kind of altitude. So the last thing you want to do is take a junker up there and then get stranded. What is my perfect day on Mount Evans? Well, let's get right to it. First off, I would take a weekday if at all possible. Way less crowds. But if all you have available is a weekend, you'll still be fine. Next, I would take the earliest window for entry that you can make a reservation for. So that is either the 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. window or the 10 a.m. to noon window. I just mentioned in the previous section that the afternoons tend to have a lot of storms. So if we go up in the morning, we don't have to worry about storms. Now that you have your reservation made, I'm gonna ask another huge favor from you. I'm gonna ask you to come up one hour earlier than what your window is for. And that's because I'm gonna have you go just down the road from the Welcome Center to Echo Lake. It is a great photography spot and always has an opportunity for those really amazing reflection shots on the lake. Once you're done with Echo Lake, you can head back up and go into Mount Evans at your time. And then the last thing left to do is just to take your time and fully enjoy it and take it in. Remember, there's no rush to get to the top. The goats are gonna be up there. The bighorn sheep are gonna be there for you to take your time and make great photos. So that's what I would do. That's my perfect day, is to stop by Echo Lake and then take my time going up to the summit of Mount Evans, making great photos.